Wow, new welding bench. We're upside down as well, but hey, we're in Australia. So quick editor's note, the tip leads video was well received. So I'll pursue more technical details in future videos. The next few videos are already in the pipeline. So if you bear with me, the detailed videos are coming. The only reason why I'm using this dividing head is because it was already set up and it's a convenient way to hold round stock. I need to get a set of collet blocks. So I've fully roughed out this slot and taken it to full depth and I know it looks terrible as it turns out I didn't tighten the chuck in the dividing head before I started cutting. The intention is to have this slot 18mm wide. I'm thinking it's going to hide all this. I've cleaned this slot up to size now and now I'm just looking at this top edge. While this is spinning in the lathe I think it's going to be a bit of a finger blender. So I'm just going to trace around the top here and try and flatten this edge out. After I flattened that edge that made the body of the chuck complete. Now onto what I'm calling the threaded plunger. Go, 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 go. Yes. The head of the plunger is too big and needs to be assembled inside the body later. So the plunger needs to be assembled in two parts. So to turn the head I'm going to use the threaded section of the plunger as a threaded mandrel. If you think this stick out's a bit excessive, I agree with you. I'm going to be plunging an end mill down to peck six holes in this thing and I need to make sure I've got clearance around the collet. So the end mill stick out's a little bit long. I think we'll get away with it. And hey, look what turned up, the week after I needed them. Off camera I turned up these apertures. These are drilled and reamed to suit different screw diameters. To drive this I put a slot at the end. Now that I've added another slotted screw to the world, there's a special place in hell for me.
So a few quick details about this. This shaft here is 20 mil. That's the largest collet that I've got. Now this probably could be held in a three jaw, but I guess for doing small precision work, a collet's better option. I did consider an option of having a collet that's screwed on, on the outside, and that might be a bit more easier to operate than this. I wanted this body to be rigid, so I'm pressing the screw head up into a rigid frame. So with the aperture at the end here, this is Loctite in place. But the purpose of this is when I've got the other apertures going on, I was a bit concerned that it was going to hold up on the radius here. So this just acts as a bit of an anvil to push the screw head up against. This is a lot bigger than what you'd normally make one of these. I've set this up so I can do 8mm bolts if I need to. Some of you would be looking at this and thinking, why would you bother? Just use an angle grinder or a bench grinder. The real advantage, when you've got tiny screws like this with funky domed heads, there's no real convenient way to hold onto it if you want to cut the thread off here. Even in your bench vise, if you try and hit this with the angle grinder, it's just going to spin on you. So being able to clamp down directly on that head is a big benefit. You can put this in the lathe and change the tip. So if you want a cone point, if you want a rounded, you can choose the type of point you want on this quite easily. Anyway, one day build. Thanks for watching.